What's going on, Coach Luca? Back here with, we're just calling Coach's Corner again, and, and talk about something that uh, is very, very important. Doesn't get talked about enough, or should I say, the drills don't get done enough, which is hip internal rotation. So imagine, you know, the hip internally rotating. So this, this part with the, the hips obviously being square, and most people lose it, right? A lot of sitting, a lot of rounded position, and just not working on it. You lose hip internal rotation. Now the thing is, as uh, Dr. Andrea Spina would say, if you don't have hip internal rotation, you don't have a hip. Um, and, but really it's been shown and it's been proven with lack of hip internal rotation, you really beat up that hip socket, that joint. And you get arthritis faster, you get, you know, you can get spurs and all those, all those lovely things that you don't really want to get much, much, much faster. So you want to make sure that you not only maintain internal rotation, but stay strong in it. Now there's a lot of different ways to do it. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to necessarily do a hundred different, there's a lot of drills that you can do. With that said, like we're gonna go over some of them, just some, some, some basic, some a little bit more, I would say intermediate to advanced that you can do at home before training and just work on this. And you know, you might see that you really lack, you really lack this and you really gotta work on it, which is perfectly fine because you can improve it. Now the thing is at, at Vigor we do mobility classes, Theo runs mobility classes, we do stuff in I would say warm-ups, we, we program this individually, um, and obviously each person is different, but nonetheless, some basics that you guys can do. Now, one of these, I would say, really, really simple ones, uh, I would say the setup is simple, doing it right, though, um, is a whole other story, which is why coaching is so important with these things, it is the quadruped, which just means on all fours. All right, so we're gonna do all four hip and turn rotation. So think about that fire hydrant and like when, when you're doing a fire hydrant, right? And you guys have probably seen that, right? Where you just drive that hip up. So imagine this, but really having that hip go through full, I would say external rotation, internal rotation, kind of looping around. And I'm gonna keep my spine neutral. What's really, really key is that, like I said, that we don't move our backs and, and rotate our backs. It's just our hip, okay? So I'm in this position and I'm going to drive my knee forward a little bit drive it up and once the thing is once I get a block meaning I can't go further right so my low back's not rotating I can't go further here now I'm going to slowly internally rotate as much as I can keeping those abs engaged and then I can't get any further now I'm going to start swiveling back around and coming through back forward, okay? And then I'd repeat that, okay? Really nice, notice, I'm not trying to go through that fast, and I'm using this arm just to keep, usually I'd have both arms on the ground, but just, just to show you guys that, like I'm not compensating. So as far up as I can go. And rotate in. Come back around, and back down. And like I said, we might go five each way, each direction. The prescriptions there are different based on the person, but notice that it's very, like, if we were coaching this, we'd actually grab the legs so that they feel full, the full rotation, right? And you do that on both sides. And so that's just a great drill that can be put in a warm-up daily routines. Um, but you can even look at, so what we do with bigger groups of, of athletes, we've taught that, you know, a basic thing that they can work on is just first teaching them so they might be laying down here and we just call them passive lift offs, right? So the, the internal rotation means, imagine that like your femur is a rotate, like your quad is essentially is rotisserie chicken, right? So you want it to rotate, okay? So you're not cheating with the knee. So if this is locked in, you don't wanna just cheat with the knee. You want that whole, and I'll actually grab my quad a lot of times to just give myself that kind of that feedback, right? So we'll teach the kids to crush something, med ball, drive them to the ground, like really create that engagement. And then we'd push down in their knee and tell them like, hey, I want you to swivel through that and get to the end range, push out to the ankle and do, for instance, five seconds, five, four, three, two, one, bring it back in. And again, five, four, three, two, one, and again. So we do three sets, 
of three sets of five sec of three reps of five seconds, if that makes sense. Right? So it's three times five seconds is one set. So you can but the key is really not compensating and teaching that hip to rotate internally. So that's a very simple one, again, that you can do. Next one, actually, I, I don't know why I got up because this is a phenomenal drill. Now, I, you guys have seen me do a ton of 90-90 stuff, right? Uh, our kin stretch, so doing this where we drive back and go into that position. But this, this one, we're going to drive the internal rotation of this hip. So what we end up doing is still getting that 90-90 position right here. But now I'm going to work on turning that belly button, trying to turn it towards that knee. Because what that's going to do is create tension and get internal rotation of this hip, OK? Now, being upright and doing that is very challenging. And I have pretty damn good hip mobility. But I'm probably going to have to lean back a little bit. So I'm going to lean back, and I'm going to start trying to turn that belly button. And obviously, I'm not going to be able to do it the whole way. Ooh, nice and spicy. So, I'm driving that as much as I can. And then you can do different type, types of holds. Multiples of 10 seconds. I like actually long holds on, this, on these ones. Try to inch away at that. Ooh, I'm feeling that in the hip. And you can see that leg shaking, right? So, ooh, spicy, spicy. Right, but that's how we can also kind of work on getting more range in that internal rotation. Now from there, this, this drill uh, right here, one I really love, and like a lot of, a lot of these things are for um, functional range conditioning, which we use a ton, right? So whether it's controlled articular rotations, whether it's pails and rails, uh, whether it's passive, passive liftoffs, all types of different things like that. Um, but, but this one, I'm gonna use the bench to get myself into this neutral position, right? So, so I'm gonna bring my hip and square my hips up, right? I'm, gonna, I'm squaring my hips up forward. And you can see how I'm elevating, obviously, this foot. The reason why I have this stick, um, this is a stick mobility stick, but you can do PVC pipe, all types of stuff. I really love these though. It's so I can create tension, right? So if I drive this down, it engages my abs because I wanna have everything be very, very solid here. No, so my, I'm not cheating through my other joints, right? I'm even gonna grab here, once again, so that I don't cheat. My hips don't rotate, my core's not turned off, right? But everything's nice and solid, and I really end up moving through that joint. So we're gonna do what's called pails and rails here, which really just means like, I'm gonna create force, so it's progressive and regressive force, right? We're gonna uh, absorb force and create force, okay? So I'm in this internal range, uh, 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 internal rotation range of motion position, and I'm gonna first drive my, I would say my ankle down into the pad. So basically imagine my foot's like this. First, I'm gonna push this way, right? With my, with, my, with my foot, which is gonna create tension in that hip. So I'm gonna And I'm ramping it up, ramping it out. Don't go zero to, zero to 60, but I'm, I ramp up, ramp up, ramp up, and then about five seconds, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, now I'm gonna try to lift it off and you'll see my foot come off the bench. <clears throat> lift it off as much as I can. Go, 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 go. <clears throat> Five, four, three, two, one. <sighs> and what we might do here, so if Theo was coaching me, like he would probably put something under my foot so we'd get that range higher and higher and higher and higher. So I'd continue to get more of that rotation and still create that force in and out, and in and out, right? So that's how we continue to create more range of motion and create, I would say, strength, control, and muscle tissue in those new ranges, right? And incredibly so, this is actually tough stuff. Funny thing about it is how much better my hip feels just after doing that, and that's just for you guys to, to kind of see right now, right? Um, but great, great, great drill. Once again, these do need some coaching because of the quality. I mean, everything that we coach, every drill, every rep, every has to be super high quality. Like our standard is high because if you learn to do really, really high standards, then guess what? Like you'll be better off, right? A lot, because if you train and you do a lot of reps, if you live, you do a lot of reps that are either gonna be good, okay, shitty, right? And that's what's gonna you know, keep your joints either healthy or not, right? So 
obviously very, very important thing that yes, one bad rep's not gonna get you, but when you keep like compounding that stuff, it's gonna be bad news bears, right? So we don't want that. Um, here's another drill that's, that's great for um, keeping you kind of honest. And you know, I, I could probably have a little bit of a different C here, but the, the kicker is, so I'm gonna once again work my left, this, this, this leg, right? I'm gonna make sure that my right one, my right, my right knee and ankle are pushing into the pad and, and cheating is getting it off the pad, right? So this kind of keeps the hips honest again. So I'm gonna get that nice neutral spine. I like just grabbing this because now I can create some core tension, right? Now for this one, I'm actually gonna have Theo run out and, and, and first I'm gonna show you guys just like here, if I was just working, right? So imagine I'm just working this and trying to get it out far and bringing it back, right? So we could have these passive drift lift offs. But once we have pretty good range of motion, what Theo's gonna do is I'm gonna push into this. Now he's gonna push it back, I'm gonna resist. And then back up. I gotta go a little further out so it doesn't block it right there. And let's do two more. And again. And break. Whew. Cramp city. So the kicker, the kicker here is why would we do something like that? Well, if you think about just activities in life and in sport, what, what, how, where do injuries happen? Deceleration, right? Eccentric control. And when you don't have internal rotation, first of all, it's going to bang up the hip or your low back. You know, if you're squatting, lunging, you really need internal rotation for squatting and lunging and deadlifting. Like, you, you, it, it has to be there. If it's not, something else is getting beat up. And in sport, imagine sprinting, accelerating, stopping, and hip internally rotates, and you don't train it eccentrically, well, guess what? We're gonna have some problems, right? So, so the, and you can do that in different positions. The one that we saw on the ground, if Theo was working with me, and I'm down, I'm creating tension, same thing. We go to end range, he'd push it, and I'd resist it, right? There's many ways to do this, but I just wanted to kind of expose you guys to some basics, uh, something that's a little more advanced, and some coaching cues for it. But you gotta start working on this, because I promise you, when we get clients into the, the, the gym, most people have very little internal rotation range of motion. And some that are hypermobile have the range but cannot control it, right? They just literally, it's like you, they can't control it, right? They're too, I would say they're hypermobile, right? They're, they're so mobile but they don't have strength in those range, ranges of motion, motion, right? And so we have to make sure they're strong through those ranges. Okay, so with that said, Coach Luca, Theo, and make sure you plug those in into your training. Ask us questions. If you got any questions about it, we'll see you in the next Coach's Corner. Peace out.